G'day guys. Oh, it's freezing. So I'm driving down the street on my way to my next job and uh, next minute I see this bloke on my way taking down this fence. And it's all getting loaded in the back of the ute there, ready to go landfill or firewood. So I said to myself, let's see if you'll give me some of that. Look, have a look at what I scored here. Look at these, they're six by six posts. They're worth a fortune. And he's just given them to me and here's what I'm gonna make with them. All right, so to begin with, I'm just using the saws all there and cutting off the rotten end of the post. And you can see everything's vibrating on the bench and sliding around, that's pretty cool. Didn't notice that while I was doing it. And just pulling out any nails, using the metal detector to find them. There was one in there, couldn't find, so I just smashed it down a bit further. Now this post here was really rotten and it cut through quite easy. I used this one for a leg, not for a part of the top. And yeah, just more denailing. Those nails inside there were pretty hard to get out. I had to use a hammerhead on its side to sort of try and tap them out. And now I'm just uh, making them straight, square, but I don't want to remove too much material. I want to keep a lot of that weathering on there because I think that looks really cool. And again, you can see I'm trying to leave as much of that weathering on as I can. And these were too big to cut in one pass, so I had to flip them um, and do them in two bits and make sure the cut's lined up. And that was a piece of fence, po fence rail that I set in there because I thought that looked cool and I'm just sanding the resin flush. Okay, right guys, so after an eternity or two's worth of milling, um, this is what I've come up with. Uh, so these have all been trimmed to size. This has ended up shorter than I wanted it to be. This is gonna be the tabletop. Now, initially I was gonna do a four by four leg underneath with two uprights. I'm no longer gonna be able to do that because I think this is just too small for our space. What I've done is those two blonde species let me show you. I've mitered them and wrapped them up to make a leg that's going to be an end frame with an open section here. So these will go on the ends like so. One like this and the other one the other way around. So this has got to be a super strong joint here. I talk a lot. I talk a lot. So, okay, so what you see me here do now is just mark out some positions for dominoes to reinforce these mitre joints. I'm using the Domino Excel with some fairly big 12 mil dominoes, four in each of those mitre joints, two deep ones in that part there and shallow ones closer to the edge. And... I find out shortly here that I've cut my dominoes too long and my mitres won't go together. I reckon I might have cut my dominoes too long. That kind of sucks. Okay, so having dealt with the issue of one domino being too long, my mitres now close up. All right, and now we're just, after the glue up, I skip recording all that. And those little calls that I'm knocking off now, were just there to help me get painting pressure at that 45 degree angle. Now I'm just doing some form work here to pour some resin and there's a the resin to reinforce those ends. You can see it making its way down there. This crack goes all the way down to here, it's a growth ring delamination. So I want to try and uh, stabilise the whole thing. Alright, now I'm just getting the top ready for glue up with some dominoes. The dominoes are just there for alignment, and that's why they're so short. I actually didn't need to do any sanding at all. It was perfectly aligned, which is really good, because I can't describe just how hard red iron bark is, and sanding basically does nothing to it. 
and here I am gluing it up. Used a heck of a lot of glue for this. These joints are ridiculously strong. This is how much surface area. So that was a full delamination. It's going right to the end of the split, which is excellent. This one here, the end grain was basically crumbling away and um, the resin's certainly done its job. It's come right down to about two inches below the surface and stabilized all of that. So I can work with that now. Just using the track saw now to cut um, the ends and watch it move on me here. On this cut, you'll see right at the end, the, the guide rail moves. There, and ruins my cut and I've got to do it again. And I did it in two passes from top to bottom with the 55mm blade. I really need a TS75, there it is, this sort of thing. I just planed that little nubbly bit off with a block plane and felt sanded smooth right at the end. And now I'm just marking for the breadboard end that's going to connect these two pieces together. It's going to be a sliding, floating connection. Uh, glued in the middle, but allowing for seasonal movement on the edges. I'm just transferring those lines to the other face so that I can see them better with the domino. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the domino XL to cut longitudinal slots. And I've got four um, 45 mil slots either side of center, so two either side of center, and a 90 millimeter slot on center. And if you're very careful when you do this and you use the scale for, on the Perspex screen either side of your line and use the right measurement each time, you'll get a very, actually a very accurate and very nicely cut slot. It's easier and faster than doing it with a router especially when you're plunging 75 millimeters deep. And yeah, you just gotta be accurate. And if you're careless and not accurate, like I was here, this will happen. Right, now I'm marking for my dowel holes, one inch from the edge. Just getting the hole started with a smaller bit and then going, now that's got a depth stop set to just make a mark on the tenon without going into it. So I'm just gonna move my holes in like half a millimeter that way and it's gonna pull the joint tight when I slam the dowels in. Uh, it's called draw boring. Okay, now the middle one we're going to glue in, so we're going to leave that tight, but all these ones we're going to elongate, and that's how the board's going to have movement. Because the grain direction on the leg is running this way, and on the top it's running this way, this wants to expand and contract along this direction, and this one doesn't. So if I just glued them together, this would split. And I'm just gluing this together in my living room because once it's assembled, I really don't want to carry it any further than I have to. It's close to 100 kilos. So glue on the middle mortise and tenon only. And I'm using a clamp as well to pull them in nice and tight. I find it helps to get a tighter joint when you're draw boring. Now that dowel gets glued all the way, and you see these ones, only on the very top, just to hold the dowel in.
Okay, so it's been about um, three weeks since I built it and released it into the wild. Please don't leave this one like that. Relying on nothing but miter joints to hold it together. You may be asking, well, how strong is it? Well, let me let me demonstrate using myself. According to Google, I weigh exactly the same as a baby elephant. 